Arrested, extradited and arraigned, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, appears in court, gets date for beginning of trial on charges of treason. Reports coming in of the suspension of direct visa employment for Nigerians by the United Arab Emirates. The reason is rising crime by Nigerians in the country. And the report details how Boko Haram and other violent groups in northern Nigeria are recruiting bandits. We'll be talking to the reporter who worked on the investigation. And with that, we say good morning and thanks for joining us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's the last day in the month of June and the last uh, episode of The Breakfast for this month. Good morning, Anita. Yes, good morning and good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, today, like you mentioned, final day in this month of June. And I was thinking to myself yesterday, isn't this year running very fast? Yeah, well, I think it's running, you know, at the same pace as every other year. There's just so much going on at the same time. And so it feels like, uh, you know, it's running faster than, than usual. Um, you know, there, there's been there's been a, a lot, you know, for the 2021 year, you know, and it almost feels like, you know, from 2019 till date, you know, we've lived in the same year because of the pandemic and because of uh, COVID-19. But of course, that's coupled with other, you know, issues that Nigeria also has. So um, that that's why it feels it's, it's a lot of a lot faster than usual. Mm. Um, but yes, looking forward to you know wrapping up the year. And you know, like we said at the end of end of 2020, we hope that the year ends with the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's let's hope that this year actually ends with. Um, well, COVID-19 ends, you know, this year completely. Mm. Most of the world would have to take their vaccines for that to happen. And we know just how much progress we've made in Nigeria. Still a long, long way to go. A, a extremely long way to go. We'll, we'll, we'll take our steps, you know, at our own pace, I believe, mm. uh, to the best of our abilities as a country. Let's begin our top trending stories today with our, uh, the biggest story in the country at the moment, which is about Namdi Kanu. We know all the stories regarding, you know, his arrest and how he was, how he basically jumped bail, went um, to the UK and how, you know, the federal government announced that he's been arrested and extradited to Nigeria and he will now begin or continue his trial. So um, the cable newspaper put together a timeline of his arrest and it says after almost four years of hide and seek, Namdi Kano back in the DSS net. So we know about the Radio Biafra in 2014. That seemed to be like one of the earliest expressions of the Biafra agitation since the Nigerian Civil War. So you know, after that Radio Biafra was launched, it, you know, basically became the face of one of the biggest secessionist movements in Nigeria um, since after the war, um, of course. And then in October 14th, 2015, um, Namdi Kanu was arrested um, at a hotel in Lagos by operatives of the Department of State Services. And then later that year, um, several courts actually ordered, uh, you know, the IPOB leader to be released, but the DSS uh, failed to comply with that. They instead slammed a five uh, count charge on him for treasonable felony and in 2016 um, three courts ruled his remandant uh, in the Kujay prison they basically cited uh, threats to national security and then on April 25th 2017 the federal high court in Abuja granted an Amdekano bail on health grounds three days later he became a free man and that's after he was detained for 18 months now, when they granted him bail, it was based on three conditions. Number one, that he wasn't going to grant media interviews. Number two was that he was going to um, he, forbidden. He was going to be forbidden from addressing crowds of you know more than ten people, and that uh, he was just going to do these things and abide by these rules, you know, for his bill conditions. But within just a few weeks of his release, he broke all these rules. He was seen with a crowd. He granted media interviews. Even in that interview, he was asked if he was not afraid of the consequences. He said that, you know, putting all those restrictions on him was like asking him not to breathe because why would he not speak to the media? Why would he not address a congregation and all of that? You know, his charities were a Jewish leader, a highly respected Nigerian, a senator um, with a 100 million naira bill bond. Um, you know, the story really gets complex from there. And there was a time when, you know, um, 
members of the army went to his place to arrest him. And Nnam Dikanu said that about 28 people were killed during that day or on that day. And his family members managed to um, take him away from his bedroom and smuggle him out of the country. And that he went to Israel where he felt safe and then later on to the UK. So after many years, you know, all the way from 2015, Nnam Dikanu has finally been arrested. And we didn't know where, but the British High Commission put out a statement uh, yesterday saying Nnam Dikanu was not arrested or extradited from the UK. Um, the federal government has not mentioned um, exactly where, but they said this was really a covert operation. And it really was very quiet because usually you'd find you know, government statements about this here and there, you know, all over the place. Well, this seemed like a very quiet operation. They swooped in, arrested him, brought him back to the country, and now he's set for trial in July. Um, okay, well, I think I'm just going to fast forward to um, the most recent, uh, you know, every other thing that happened in the past. I think, um, you know, a lot of people are already aware, um, you know, except the, you know, you mentioned that it started, you know, in 2014. It, it didn't actually start in 2014. It Radio started Biafra. a lot. Um, already Biafra, yeah, but it was, the agitation didn't start in 2014. Um, the direction only changed in 2014, you know, with, you know, his emergence. Um, there was always uh, Masob and uh, Rafa Wazuriki and a couple other people who had uh, pushed for, you know, the same Biafra agitation, but, you know, a lot, you know, more quietly than he did. You know, so his emergence basically... Um, um, you know, made it louder, made it more, um, um, not necessarily violent, but vocally or verbally very um, insultive. Um, the controversies, you know, from yesterday really were, um, how did it happen? How long had it been, you know, had it been on the, uh, you know, in, in custody of the Nigerian government? They said where since was Sunday, he, um, Sunday 27th. Uh, where was he um, arrested from? Um, if it was extradited from the UK, you know, how did it happen so fast? You know, so those, those were all the controversies from um, yesterday. Um, um, and of course, eventually, like you mentioned, there was a statement by the um, UK High Commissioner saying he wasn't arrested in the UK. So somehow, some way, he maybe had left the UK and, you know, was arrested someplace else. Um, because a lot of people are, had argued that it was not possible for you to just, you know, extradite a, um, uh, a person from the United Kingdom um, so fast, you know, without any... Um, appeals, you know, against extradition without any court cases, without anything. Um, and then people started bringing up Umaru Diko uh, as an example, um, you know, with, of course, President Muhammad Abari once again. Um, so there is all of, all of those, you know, um, there is mixed emotions concerning this. There is, there's actually so many angles. There's uh, those who are celebrating, there's those who say, well, you know, he must, um, you know, be taken through, you know, a, a court process that respects his rights. Um, it must be an open trial, it must be a fair trial, and all of that. There's those who say, well, they don't feel sorry for him because of what have, um, the things that have happened in the Southeast in the last long while, you know, with the violence, the killing of um, uh, police officers, and of course, uh, the attacks on INEC offices. Um, there's also those, um, I'm going to share a couple of people, um, of uh, messages from uh, random people that I saw uh, on the internet. Um, there's those who have criticized the celebration and reminded people that you know, Namdi Kanu is really not Nigeria's problem. There's, you know, Nigeria has bigger problems than Namdi Kanu. Um, and for those who are celebrating, you know, they, you know, were almost silent when they heard that Shekau was dead. You know, they didn't celebrate Shekau's death, who, of course, has been responsible for the death of thousands of Nigerians. Um, that wasn't celebrated as much as uh, the, the arrest of Namdi Kanu. And so, you know, it seems very hypocr hypocritical um, if we're talking about living in a peaceful and a safe Nigeria. Um, um, I'm going to share, you know, there's um, Sheh Hussani here saying that um, the fundamental rights of Namdi Kanu should be respected in compliance with the relevant articles of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. His trial should be guided by justice, fairness, and rule of law, and not sentiments, prejudice, hate, ill feelings, vengeance, or bigotry. Uh, this other person here, um, Oyekuzi, says in the beginning there was Wazuriki and Masob, then Namdi Kanu came along with IPOB. In the future, Somebody else will emerge because the Igbo political elite will not change. I know them. They didn't change after our passenger disgraced Anambra on Dangige. There's also someone, also someone here saying, I'm glad they've arrested Namdi Kanu. Food will be, this is sarcasm, uh, says food will be cheap. Kidnapping will stop. Terrorists in the north will cease fire. Killer Fulani headers will maintain peace. Corruption will end. And uh, 100 million Nigerians will be lifted out of poverty. Um, sarcasm, of course. Um, this one here says, uh, Mazen Namdekano's arrest and Twitter ban has uh, shown that Nigeria has all it takes to arrest, um, um, well, terrorists and banditry and Boko Haram and ISWAP menace in Nigeria. 
Sane Bacha said, any insurgency that lasts more than 24 hours, government officials have a hand in it. Um, and it also adds that whether you are for or against Namikano's arrest, do not lose sight of the issues. Rights to self-determination is no crime and must never be criminalized. Agitations won't go away, but this presents a unique opportunity for Igbo leaders and the, uh, the five stooges to begin to jail the Igbos. I'm going to stop you know, there, uh, but those are just random comments from uh, persons. Um, and quickly also just you know, share my thoughts on the uh, part where... Um, you know, there, yeah, you know, the part where uh, a lot of people have also said that this shows that the Nigerian government has the capacity, has the capabilities to arrest any person um, and has no excuse for not being able to arrest Shaka or any of the bandit leaders in the last couple of years in Nigeria, in the last six and last ten years. There's absolutely no excuse why any of those people couldn't have been picked up. If Nambikani could have been arrested outside Nigeria, um, any, I have no idea where he was picked up. Um, but they had the resources, they had intelligence enough to find him wherever he was and bring him back to Nigeria, then there's absolutely no excuse why the bandit we spoke about yesterday who was boasting about killing soldiers cannot be arrested. There's absolutely no excuse. And I remember when they used to, you know, you know give that excuse that Sambisa Forest is as big as Belgium or is bigger than Belgium. And so, you know, it's very difficult to find terrorists in there. Nobody knows where Shekau is. All those, for me, are total bollocks. Um, there is absolutely no excuse and no reason why any of these people who have been committing atrocities against the Nigerian state in the last three, four, five, six, ten years could not have been arrested. There's absolutely no excuse why the Nigerian government could not have the intelligence to pick up um, Abubakar Shekau or any of the bandit leaders, the Boko Haram leaders, which we will be talking about today. They're currently recruiting as part of the things that we will discuss in our, in our um, um, program this morning. There's absolutely no excuse on the face of this earth why the Nigerian government has failed to be able to pick up every single person who has committed crimes against Nigerian state led to the loss of lives and families and properties worth billions. You can't even quantify what those lives cost. Um, but there's, okay. no, there's no excuse whatsoever why they haven't been able to get all of those. And we simply are today, or well, not we, some people are celebrating the arrest of Namdi Kano. Um, I understand the <clears throat> perspectives of people who, you know, talk about the Boko Haram insurgency, talk about all the killings and you know, all these other challenges in the country. But I would like to examine the Namdukano's case on his own merits and not say, oh, how about this, how about that, how about that. Based on Namdukano's situation, right, do, can we all agree that the charges placed on him maybe you know, have some basis? The fact that they've, you know, he's basically stirred up agitations in Nigeria, asking for, you know, secession, a breakout of the country, you know, instigating violence. That's what we should focus on and not say, how about this other person? How about that other person? Uh, once again, Nnamdi agitating, Kanu, is agitating he guilty? for secession is not a crime. Oh, well, okay, if you say so. But what the, he's been charged for, treasonable felony, mm -hmm. he's been, let, let me read out, read out these charges for you. He's been charged of, for managing an unlawful society, publication of defamatory matter, Illegal possession of firearms. These are all things. And that's why the law courts exist for, you know, people who know better than us legally, judicially to determine whether or not he's innocent or guilty. Mm -hmm. So let's wait for July the 26th and examine these issues on their own merits. Because you won't say, how about this other person? No, Those I'm, people I'm, I'm simply mentioning, have, it, I haven't, nobody has said Namikano is innocent. <laughs> nobody has said that he may not be guilty of these so, crimes what I'm, or what some I'm of the things that he's done. But let's let's cannot, assess can't the situation on that, its own merits. We can't leave that out of the conversation because if we simply ask... Nigeria has when suffered. You, when you go to the law the, court, um, no, sorry, when Nigeria you, has suffered. When you, death, go to the, when you go to the law court, you can't leave it out of conversation. I'm sorry. No, when you go to the law court, you wouldn't say, "Oh, I'm how about Boko Haram? How about Fulani Hurd?" You court. wouldn't say that. You would. You would. The, the judges and the lawyers would argue based. on I am not going to be in court so with them. I feel that's what the conversation should nope, be about. I'm not going to be in court with them, and I'm All simply right. saying that regardless of how you want to make this, he might be entirely guilty, and if he's guilty, he should pay for his crimes. But. In this conversation, you cannot leave out the fact that Nigeria, till today, still suffers from failure of government to arrest people who have led to the loss of dozens, hundreds, thousands of lives. So why don't we lives. focus on the one they have already arrested now? <laughs> Let's move on and now. And leave the rest? Our, our second top trending story, um, something lighter, right? And we're talking about Nigerian students who are innovative and put in all their creativity to work. And we know that in a federal university of uh, technology, MENA, 
uh, students of that school are not new to this kind of innovation. Back in 2017, um, 500 level students of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, had produced a solar powered car. I mean, this made headlines across the country. And just yesterday, we saw videos of, you know, um, students of that same school. Um, that video should be up in a minute. Basically, with this um, car locally built, you know, it looks, it looks sophisticated in some way, you know, painted in black, really beautiful design. Even though I didn't catch, you know, parts of the video where the car moved, but the car looked great. And I think that's the kind of innovation that we should support in the country. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, kudos to them. I'm not, you know, necessarily, you know, I personally am not necessarily excited about things like that. Yes, I know that we, um, the government should be able to support, you know, um, um, and, and invest better with uh, skills like that and talent like that, absolutely. Um, but in that space, um, there is, you know, a lot more that, I, I personally feel that we should have been in a way better place. Um, and when we see videos like that, you know, every now and then we see, a, you know, a young boy in, in Anambra or in Bainway, you know, with a small, you know, carton, you know, and some tires and, you know, the remote control and everybody's clapping at it. Uh, clapping for it, you know, but there's kids in Singapore, kids in, in China, kids in, 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 in Australia who are um, doing things a hundred years, you know, beyond that, you know, and some of all those things really just show me personally that we're still in, you know, 1970 or we're still in 19, you know, 50. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily clap for all of that. Um, kudos to, you know, to them. And I hope that they're able to develop more of those skills and uh, they, they get the support that they need from their state government, from the federal government to be able to do a whole lot more also. All right, uh, we'll take a short break. Uh, when we come back, of course, we're going to look through the papers this morning and see what major stories are making headlines across the country this morning with Ademola Akimbola. Stay with us.